Hi troops, welcome back. Today we're going to go over breast thermography history. I think it's vital for you to understand where breast thermography has come from so you can understand the importance. In 1964, William Hobbins, MD, was a neurosurgeon. One of his very close friends died at the age of 36 from breast cancer. A lump was detected in May and she passed away in December. After her death, he realized the importance of early detection because in the 60s, palpation was the only form of early detection. So what Dr. Hobbins decided to do was go study mammography with Bobby Egan. From 1965 to 1971, he imaged 3,175 women with mammography. He found 23 unpalpable cancers and actually won an award from the Wisconsin Surgical Society for finding that many cancers. During his time studying thermography, Dr. Hobbins heard about thermography. Now back then, thermography was being researched by radiologists. He went and studied with Guthrie and Grow in Sweden and then Ray Lawson in Canada. He then brought thermography back to the United States. From 1971 to 1975, he imaged 100,000 women throughout the Midwest. It was from this large mass study of 100,000 women from 71 to 75 that Dr. Hobbins collected all the data for the interpretation model of certified breast thermography. With this data, he created the certified breast thermography interpretation model. He took this information and taught it to several MDs in the United States, South America, and Asia. So if you are receiving breast thermography in South America or Asia, Dr. Hobbins was the teacher of your doctors. What is very interesting is when Dr. Hobbins returned to Korea in 2003, he had 350 students and breast thermography is being utilized in every single hospital there. That's pretty amazing. Dr. Hobbins toured the globe 10 times teaching 1,800 physicians breast thermography. Now, out of those 1,800 physicians, I'm the only one, I'm actually a Chinese medical practitioner, who studied with him for five years. What Dr. Hobbins has learned in 43 years of breast thermography is what is considered women's health is actually increasing breast cancer numbers. For example, in 1980s, they started putting soy, which is used as an emulsifier or a glue, into processed foods. Now, in the 70s and 80s, women had non-vascular breasts. What he saw with the introduction of soy into our processed foods is that increase in vascularity or neoangiogenesis was starting to run rampant in women's breasts. So starting in the 1980s, he started recommending all women to get off soy immediately. So I'm going to show you a couple examples of women on soy-based diets. Now these are women that are not using flax, not using bioidenticals, only using soy. So as you can see in the first example, this woman has what we call an increased vascular pattern in her breast, which increases her risk. And again, in another example, we can see again what soy is doing to the breast. Remember, we want to be non-vascular. So when I started studying with Dr. Hobbins, he completely changed my life. I really realized the importance of true breast health by removing all estrogens from my lifestyle. Again, this is an example of flax, which is called a phytoestrogen or plant-derived estrogen. It's believed that these are weak and will not harm the breasts, and as we can see, this is not true. So when I started studying with Dr. Hobbins, I really realized he was the only doctor that was truly teaching breast health, and what's so wonderful is you can actually see the difference in the thermograms. Okay, troops, another thing to discuss in breast thermography history is the technology. In 1979, Maurice Bales invented the first ever digital infrared camera. This was the first camera ever FDA approved for breast thermography till 2010. To this date, it still has the highest optical line, or highest resolution, 600 optical line. Now, what is important is to realize the minimum optical line you should be using for the breast is 480. Now, breast thermography can be used on other areas of the body, and you can use an optical line that is lower, usually 180 or 240, but for the breast, you really should demand a high quality camera. This way, you can detect small changes in the breast. So here are some comparative images of a low resolution camera, 180 versus the optical line of 600. As you can see, they only do the images in color, 
Now the problem is, is they do not image in reverse gray or black hot. You want to do this to see the vascular patterns or neoangiogenesis. That is true early detection. As you can clearly see, the 180 optical line just doesn't have the detail that the 600 optical line does have for the breast. Martin Bales, Maurice's son, and I met in graduate school. That is where together we started Pink Image Certified Breast Thermography Clinics. We also started the first ever Women's Academy of Breast Thermography. This is the only academy that is meeting the minimum standard requirement set forth by the small group of MDs in the early 70s. At this academy, you can find locations in the United States for qualified breast thermography. Now again, there's not very many, so what we're trying to do with the revolution is to not only mass educate women, but medical doctors so they understand the importance of breast thermography and breast cancer screening. Okay troops, so that's a quick history of breast thermography. Remember, arm yourself with knowledge so you can win the battle against breast cancer. Hey troops, it only takes one to start a revolution. Spread the word. Show your support for breast thermography and breast health with the I Heart TT sticker. Flash your TTs everywhere and then post it on our Facebook page.